have no idea how that myth or any other myth gets started, uh, but it's amazing how it generates a life of its own. I got interested in love bugs when I moved from Arizona as a recent graduate at the University of Arizona to Florida for my first real job. And I was studying insect reproduction at that time. And what could be better than to arrive with all of these insects flying around reproducing? So I got interested in it. And I guess it just continued from there until now. Frankly, it's not likely or logical that you would select a love bug <laughs> as a predator. They're plant feeding insects. They don't even have teeth, in other words, mandibles. So if you wanna genetically modify something, choose a predator like a dragonfly, you know, something that can really go after mosquitoes, which they do. But a love bug, that just wouldn't make any sense at all. And so how could somebody come up with that idea? It's a little bizarre. Well, we know when. They came in the late 50s, early 60s and spread across the Gulf states from Yucatan. I would suspect it's because we had our highway system developed and lots of good habitat. I mentioned they have a need to have a specific amount of moisture and the edge of a roadway is just perfect. They can move up and down and get just the habitat they need. It could have been through movement of turf. It could have been through uh, weather patterns. It could have been a lot of things that aided them, but they moved across the Gulf states and up into the Carolinas uh, by the late seven, well, mid seventies. They're attracted to exhaust of, of automobiles, lawnmowers, any kind of uh, combustion that is hit by ultraviolet light and it changes into a, an attractant. Uh, the, the literature says aldehydes, the chemicals that are in exhaust are attractants. So that's the highway. Uh, and you can find out if you mow grass and they'll, they'll get around the lawnmower. Well, why is always a difficult problem. Uh, we can measure what they do, um, but what's the, let's say, motivation if we want to be anthropomorphic? Um, it, may, it may mimic some of the emissions from swamps, and that would be my thought, that they're keying in on that, that swampy atmosphere, perhaps, or it may just be circumstance, so, something triggered in their uh, behavior that has nothing to do with, with their biology. It's just their physiological reaction to these chemicals. I, I can't imagine why, but they do. It bothered me <laughs> that this myth was going around, so I tested it and uh, found out they're neutral. They're about seven pH. They're not acidic at all. So what, next question is, what's destroying the paint on the car? When you see these things splattered on a car, there's a white streak, and that is eggs. And what I think is going on is about the same thing as if you hit a chicken egg on a car and leave it there in the sun. I think it's a chemical reaction with whatever the eggs happen to be. And uh, if you leave them on the paint, they will begin to uh, penetrate and, and ruin the paint. And it's the same thing as somebody hits your car with a chicken egg. So you just have to get them off in a hurry, but they are not a city. Not really. I recommend people use a fan, just a regular box fan on a patio, for example. These insects don't fly very well, so you can blow them away. And if they accumulate, vacuum them up that's the best thing. And we've done flight mill studies to show how much they can actually fly by themselves. And it's not a lot. So they get up into the airstream and they're moved along by the wind. And it's um, easy it, to imagine that the wind blows up against a house. And then you get accumulation of love bugs at the base of the wall. They're not necessarily attracted. They just 
arrive. But I will say that love bugs, like other flies, are attracted to light colors, uh, white, uh, light yellow. Again, they, they're really not hurting anything unless you've just painted a wall and they ruin it, which has happened to me. <laughs> and so you can work around that through the seasons. Well, you know, I hope it's because people think we are really good at what we do. <laughs> and capable of doing something like that. We are, our faculty's phenomenal. So maybe people are, are just respecting us and saying that we're capable of doing things that nobody else can do. The males are really cute. Uh, they have big eyes. We think that's because they use their vision to find the females. You know, it's it's easy to pr to appreciate a butterfly or or perhaps a, a, a pollinator that you can see, they're bigger. Well, love bugs are just as cute as those insects and just as interesting. So I, I just appreciate people caring about the natural environment and how things are in terms of the health of our insects and other animals. There's nothing that a love bug can do that'll harm you. They're related to gnats. And so they don't sting, they don't bite, they don't cause any problems other than being a nuisance. And they're actually classified as a nuisance pest rather than an actual um, crop damaging pest or a vector of diseases. They're relatively innocuous except for the mess they make on people's cars twice a year. Mm -hmm.